hey guys, welcome to our AI Gram tutorial. Uh, for this tutorial, we'll be teaching how to create a simple Telegram bot. And the reason why we use AI Gram and not the basic Telegram API is that, well, AI Gram provides more abstraction of the complexities of the Telegram API. It provides a more intuitive and uh, Pythonic way to interact with uh, Telegram's functionalities. It basically simplifies all the processes and abstracts it to one simple module. Uh, Aogram is basically built on top of AsyncIO and it enables asynchronous programming. So it's a lot more faster and um, it, it, it has overall better performance and responsiveness as compared to just using the Telegram API, which I think is one step further than just using the Telegram API. So I recommend most to actually use Aogram instead. Uh, it does carry over a lot of uh, functions from the Telegram API. So uh, if you're familiar with the Telegram API, it's not too hard to use um, Aogram. And it also offers a lot more features, uh, especially finite state machines, which we'll get to the, probably in the third tutorial. And it's very useful for having a sequential way of uh, getting user data, for example. So first things first, we're going to show a simple demonstration of what we're going to do for this tutorial. Uh, so we're just going to show, okay, we're going to start. And once you click start, it just says welcome. And we can uh, take it a further step, and we can actually have um, responses based on what we type. So suppose we have something like this. Well, it doesn't say anything. Uh, let's say it's something with lower caps. Also doesn't say anything. But if there's something upper caps and a full stop at the end, well, we get a message that says your message is upper and ends with a full stop. So we can actually have filters based on what we type. And we can also take it a step further. So let's say we upload a photo. Let's upload this. And it says photo, and it says OK, upload it. And if you go on to check, well, it's in our photo here. So basically, we have this local storage uh, that we can use. So whenever a user sends something, well, uh, it gets uploaded here. Furthermore, we can actually go ahead and let's just upload a random document. It says document uploaded. So let's go ahead and check and it says, okay, fine, it's here. So that's pretty much the basic functionalities that we're going to show for this uh, bot. And it's um, it's pretty much, it's, it's pretty useful to actually do all this stuff. And it's very simple. So first things first, we're going to actually set up the bot itself. All right. So if you go onto the Telegram, make sure to search up bot father if you in the first few. So for the sake of the demonstration, we're going to delete our bot here. For security reasons. Okay, and let's start from scratch. So let's just start with new bot. Let's just call it YouTube. And okay, YouTube demonstration bot. Okay, never mind. Okay, so the most important thing here is this. Um, API key. So obviously for this sake of tutorial, I will show it public, but make sure to not show this to anyone. So when you're using GitHub or anything, make sure to store it in another file, then use Python's with open to extract this API key and to make sure to not to commit that file to uh, your GitHub repository. Uh, this is very important because as long as I have this API, I can do anything with your bot. You'll see how, it is, how easy it is later on. So we now move on to the actual creation of the code itself. And we're just going to take it simple. So for this tutorial, we're going through how to install AIgram, uh, how to set up the AIgram environment, how to handle basic commands, uh, how to handle different types of messages, basically the filters. And that would be basically the foundation of um, how to create a Telegram bot, essentially. So we get back to that. Okay, now that we showed the demonstration, let's go ahead and actually set up uh, AIgram itself. So first things first, you're going to redirect yourself to these, uh, where your Python is installed. Um, here it's actually in app data, local, programs, Python, and then this is your latest version, 311. Um, then afterwards, just open up your command prompt, run as administrator. Just copy that, change directory inside that, and further change directory inside scripts. Okay, afterwards, just pip install AIgram. It goes to 2.25.2. We're using a, 
earlier version because Mobi has been around for a longer time and it's just as good as the latest versions and it's, uh, it's easier to find support for it essentially and after we're done with that let's just go back to our BS code Control shift p and select interpreter just to make sure that you selected the right version of python the one that was installed uh, in the directory that we just showed earlier okay not, not the microsoft one okay and as we said earlier we don't want to put our api key in the main file itself right yeah, this is for security reasons we don't want to commit this file with the api key and if not people will use it so make sure to put it inside a text file and just use this code to read it inside our API key field itself. We're just using Python's with open to read it uh, the text file and store it inside. And after it's done, let's just go ahead and import the, um, the most relevant modules for now. So from AIgram, import bot, dispatcher, and types. And then the next one will be from AIgram.utilities, import executor. And we're going to import OS just for secondary purposes. We want to download images to our local computer. All right. So now we have our API key. Let's go ahead and actually set up the bot itself. So let's just write comments. Initialize bot and dispatcher. So how this is going to work is that we're going to have a bot and a dispatcher itself. Okay. So bot token equals to API key and then we're gonna have a dispatcher we're gonna put bot inside of that and this is important and now this allows us to create our message handlers and to actually register our functions to be actually useful which will show on so uh, later on so after we're done with this at the end well remember Python files are not constantly running right we have to make sure that our bot actually constantly listens for what the user inputs and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the executor to start polling constantly to start uh, listening for uh, user input. So if name equals to main, this is to make sure that we're actually running the file directly. And if so, the name will be set to main. And then executor start polling we're going to put our dispatcher in and we're going to skip updates okay and that's our main bot and once we're done with this uh, we're actually going to start with very very basic um, function so let's just create a simple function that uh, allows us to just uh, start with a command start slash start so we're going to use a message handler and this is where things uh, start to get a bit, a bit confusing. So what a message handler does, it basically registers a function to, to serve a specific focus. Now if you look here, a message handler will have these different fields, custom filters, commands, regular expression, content types, state, a run task and this. The most important one is commands and state that we go through later content types and custom filters so for now we're just going to go through commands so what this allows us to do is that we're going to allow a function to be registered to a specific command and this basically filters all of the different inputs by the users so suppose if commands that a user put is start and if this function is registered to start then this function will handle it so let's say we have commands and we're going to this is the syntax for it in an array, we're going to put start. So if user puts in start, then this function will be handling that one. Essentially, this message handler acts like a filter. If the filter resolves to true, this function will handle it. Let's say if I put something like exit or help, well, this will resolve to false and we actually don't, uh, this function will not be called. And that's how the handler essentially works. So let's just call it our function start. It can be any name. It doesn't matter because this is the one that's actually tagged to it. And this is where another important thing is our arguments. In terms of context of AIgram, we're going to use a lot of type hinting. And this helps us a lot because we want, we'll want we be dealing with a lot of classes and modules and we want to figure out what we're actually writing in our functions. So in this case, every function, if it's 
uh, every basic function will have this message will be which is of a types dot message uh, type uh, where message is actually a class if you look here it's actually a very a lot of functions and it's actually quite useful it allows us to get the user ID reply to the user and so on so let's just go back to here and let's just create a basic uh, function that actually just replies to the user. Welcome. So notice, if I go on here and I say message, and notice the numerous amount of stuff that we can actually do with this. We have reply, we have answer, which actually does the same thing actually. Um, so it doesn't matter. Uh, then most important stuff is there's also one that has a user and which you can actually get a user ID which I won't be showing for security reasons but we use this to actually uh, to actually okay to identify users and if you're using databases it actually allows us to figure out who is actually writing and since every user has his own unique ID we can actually use this as the uh, pivot point to actually do our da uh, database cr uh, creation all that so if you have multiple databases, each uh, entry can be pivoted around the message uh, user ID. And it's actually very useful, so it's just a side thing. Uh, so if you're doing system design, this is something that you can consider for you to pivot around, essentially. Okay, so let's just actually go ahead and actually run this. Okay, and now since updates are skipped successfully, that means this is already starting to pull. Let's just go back to our bot folder and I'll just click on the bot here. And you say the first time when you create this, it'll be an automatic start command. And it says welcome. So every time that we do this, oh, we'll be welcome. So that's the basic uh, functions of this bot. We're dealing start. Suppose that I do, I can take it a step further. Let's say help. What help do you need? And we have to register our commands. Okay, let's just rerun it. So we create start, we create help, and there we go. We have these multiple functions that. Uh, allows us to handle different commands essentially and we actually can add multiple commands to this same thing so we just have to use since this is an array we just add uh, different commands to this suppose the user actually types in a typo let's say starts or starting well we can actually handle these three different things and actually identifies the same one so let's just show that So we have start, we have starts, and we have start thing. Notice that we have better handle all these three. If I put anything else, it won't be uh, handled by anything because well, the code looks for any specific uh, function that was registered as handler that actually handles that one, and it doesn't work. And so if you want to create a general one, well, what you do is don't put anything inside, and by default, if you go into the source code of that, Default would be content type is just text. So it, it basically just handles everything that's not captured by any of that. So let's just create that. Uh, and okay, so in this case, what we're gonna do is gonna reply whatever the user just said. So we're just gonna message dot data, sorry. Message dot text, sorry. So this is whatever the user just typed, okay. And I'm just gonna run it. So if I create start, it handles start because it's captured by that function. If I create help, it's captured by the help function. But if I type some random nonsense, well, it just replies that. Or if I type in random stuff like that, well, it just replies this as well. Because it goes sequentially and finds, okay, this is not handled by him, this is not handled by him. And this is what, what we're gonna capture. It's actually any text that's are not captured by any of this, it's captured by this guy. So this is the basic functionality. And from 
we're going to actually go on a bit further to actually show what are the different filters. And I think this is the most important one because once you understand what this message handler does and the different filters, it actually helps you to start planning for how you're going to uh, design your Telegram bot. So we'll get back to that soon.